Okay, so here we're going to do one more example uh, using Newton's method. So suppose, uh, so we're going to use two iterations of Newton's method to approximate the x value of a point of intersection of the functions uh, x squared minus 4 and 2x minus 3. And we're even uh, going to be given the first guess that x sub 1 equals 0. So again, uh, if we try to find points of intersection, we can just set the two functions equal to each other. That's what we want to do. What Newton's method does is it takes an equation and it tries to find the zeros or the roots. So what I'm going to do is just turn this into an equation where one side is zero. So we have x squared, we can subtract the 2x over, we could add 3 to both sides which would give us negative 1, and we're going to set that equal to zero. So again, this is what Newton's method tries to solve, equations set equal to zero. So again, our formula, um, we use f of x and f primes when we write it sort of generically, but I've already used the function f of x. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this function, I'm going to call it h of x. Okay, so h of x is going to equal x squared minus 2x minus 1. We have to take the derivative of that uh, when, when we use the Newton's method formula. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x and then negative 2x will give us negative 2. And again, notice we started off with the guess uh, 0. And certainly if you plug 0 into the left side, you get negative 1. And hey, I guess negative 1 is pretty close to 0. So this seems like an OK guess. So it says to get our second guess, we take our first guess, which is 0, and then we subtract away. It says we have to plug 0 into the original function. And then we have to plug 0 into the derivative. OK, so well, if we simplify this, uh, I guess we have 0 minus, well, on top we would have 0 minus 0 minus 1. And then we would have 0 minus 2, so I guess we'd have negative 2. So the negative over the negative would make a positive, but we still have the minus sign from the beginning. So it looks like our, our second guess would be the number negative 1 half. And again, now I just do the exact same thing. Um, so it's just a, a big infinite loop here. Um, so now it says to figure out our third guess, I'm going to take our um, second guess, which is negative 1 half, and then we subtract away, and then we plug negative 1 half back into our original function. So negative 1 over 2 squared minus 2 times negative 1 over 2 minus 1, and then we have to plug that same value into our derivative and put that in the denominator. And now we've got to simplify this a little bit. So let's see. So we've got negative 1 half minus, let's see, negative 1 half squared is going to be a fourth. Let's see, we have negative 2 times negative 1 half, so that's going to be positive 1, but hey, then we have this minus 1, so those all cancel out, so that's nice. Um, it looks like we would have, so 2 times negative 1 half would be negative 1, uh, still minus 2. So we've got negative 1 half, we've got 1 fourth on the top. I guess we'll have negative 3 in the denominator. Um, a negative and a negative make a positive. So this is negative 1 over 2. Let's see, so a fourth divided by 3. Again, you can think about that as being 3 over 1. So how do we divide fractions? We flip and multiply. So we would have 1 fourth times 1 third. So we have negative 1 over 2 plus a twelfth. And again, uh, we could multiply top and bottom of our first fraction by 6. I guess that would give us 6 over 12 if we get uh, common denominators. And when we combine those, it looks like we would get negative 5 over 12. And that would be our second approximation. Whew. So, okay, so a little, you know, a little tedious, but again, to me it's not really, it's not challenging in the sense that all it is is once you have the function and the derivative, it's just arithmetic. Um, certainly it's easy to make a mistake with all the, you know, pluses and minuses and what have you. Um, but again, um, it's really just arithmetic at that point. So again, if you wanted to find your fourth guess, you would just do the same thing. Instead of having negative one-halves everywhere, because that was our previous guess, 
we would just plug in negative 5 halves into all those places and we would just repeat and that would give us our fourth approximation and you can just keep going as long as you want to hopefully uh, the number is going to get closer and closer to some specific number um, you can always check it by plugging it in but that should be the number that's giving you your uh, your root or in this case equivalently our point of intersection